here we are under the hood of our 2013 to 2018 Ram Cummins. This specific truck is a 2018 2500. So it has the 6.7 liter Cummins with the 68 RFE transmission, but this module will work in the 3500s with the Ace and Trans. It's the same part number. 32711 is the part number on the device for this application. We're gonna start the install by disconnecting our driver and passenger side batteries. We just need a 10 millimeter socket and an eight millimeter socket to do so. So we're going to disconnect this passenger side battery. We're just gonna remove the negative terminal. Make sure we don't have contact on that post and then we'll move over to the driver's side with our 10 millimeter. Do the same here. And then we can start with the installation of our wiring harness. Get this out of the way so we can get to our mass airflow. Now the harness itself has got a few connections that we're gonna make under the hood here. We're gonna start right here on the passenger side with the longest section of the harness, which comes across the firewall right here to the mass airflow sensor on the factory air box. Um, you'll find two sensors here on the air box. We need to use the one that's furthest back, which is closest to the cab. There's a red retainer clip that needs to be pressed up so that you can disengage that sensor and then just press on the back side with your thumb to unclick the safety latch and then disconnect that factory sensor. The new harness that comes with your EZX will just simply plug and play right into those factory connectors. You'll hear it click and then you can close your safety latch and then connect to the sensor itself till it clicks. When we're done with all of our connections, we'll go back and zip tie all of this wiring harness up to the firewall, get it away from any heat sources or any moving parts with your steering, etc., etc. So we're gonna move over here to the driver's side of the engine and we need to connect to our map sensor. This sensor is located on the back side of the air intake horn right below this engine cover. We've got the large solenoid here on your EGR valve. Um, the MAP sensor is on the back side of that intake horn. And it's just like the mass airflow sensor where you've got to depress a tab to get it to disconnect. There is not a safety keeper on this one. So we just need to disconnect that MAP sensor. This is for... And then the new sensor will just piggyback in, or the new harness will piggyback in place. So one end into the wiring harness and the other end into the factory sensor. Got that one connected. Next, we're gonna move on to the fuel rail pressure sensor. This is the most challenging part of the installation. Uh, Ram did a really good job of making this sensor virtually impossible to get to. So it is a little bit challenging. It will take some time and some patience. The rail pressure sensor is located at the very back of the fuel rail, which is here on the driver's side of the engine. Um, the sensor is on the very back next to cylinder number six. In some applications, you can reach your hand between the master, brake master and the engine. You can get your arm down in there and feel around until you can find that rail pressure sensor on the back side. But there is a clip that you need to uh, depress. It's hard to get your fingers on it. In our particular truck, the way that sensor is clocked on the fuel rail, we can actually get better access to disconnecting it from the ground. So you may need to try from above or below to get to that sensor, and you may need to enlist the help of a friend, um, depending on how that sensor is clocked. So we'll move on to the installation of that sensor next. We're gonna move down below the truck to get the factory rail pressure sensor disconnected, and then we can piggyback our harness onto it. All right, so here we are laying under the truck on the driver's side of the engine. So this is above the engine starter. You can see the bottom of the fuel rail. Um, and that sensor is hiding right behind that stainless steel shield um, or the, the engine 
hoist mount. So it's, it's not in an easy spot to access with your hands um, to get that disconnected. So you may need to try from below or above, but once you get that sensor disconnected, you can take that EZX harness and then just piggyback it into the sensor and the factory harness. Okay, so we're gonna try and get you a better view of where that rail pressure sensor is located. So you have to forgive me for the shaky camera here, but we're gonna reach our hand back in here as best we can and get you that angle of that rail pressure sensor. It's right back here in the very back next to cylinder six. Uh, you can see this. Why this black wire loom right here, it wraps around and the rail pressure sensor is right there on the back of that fuel rail against the firewall. There is a yellow keeper that needs to be pulled out with a pick tool or a pair of pliers and then the uh, sensor can be disconnected and removed so that the new EZX harness can be plugged into it right there. Okay, so now we've got our fuel rail pressure connected. We've connected our MAP sensor that's on the back of that intake horn, and we've connected our mass airflow that's over on the intake side. So the next step is to connect our module to the harness, and then we also need to grab power with the ring terminal that comes off of the harness right here on the driver's side battery. So again, using our ratchet, we're gonna 10 millimeter socket and remove this nut here on this terminal. We're gonna take this ring terminal on the wire of our EZX harness. We're gonna snug this nut back up. Now we can connect our EZX module to the wiring harness. You'll see that it'll only go in one way and it will click once it's seated. And then we've uh, included some uh, zip ties and some Velcro that will allow you to mount this here under the hood. Um, next, we need to move into the cab. You'll see this short end of this harness with this small six pin access link on the harness that needs to go into the cab of the truck. Now there's a couple places you can do this. You can do this through the shift linkage um, port on the firewall. There's also a, a plastic cap located on the firewall that we've opted to slice a hole through so that we can get this harness routed and run into the cab. And once that's through the firewall into the cab, we can then move in there where we can connect to it and then make our connections at our CAN bus line with the Starlink connector um, and at the accelerator pedal. So we'll move on to that next. All right, so here we are in the cab of the truck. We're gonna connect to our accelerator pedal position sensor, which is right here at the top of the throttle pedal itself. You can, like the other sensors, you have to depress a tab with your thumb. And then that will simply disconnect. Then we can come in with the short harness that was included with the EZX and make our connections at that pedal. like that and then we will move over and make the connection to our Starlink for our CAN bus and then we can also plug in that six pin access connector that we push through the firewall all right reposition so you can see that six pin connector we push through the firewall here just need to make that connection real quick And then the last connection we need to make is this small star connector for our CAN bus. You'll see this green connector here right under 
the dash. This is right behind your emergency brake pedal. There are some open ports on the front facing edge of this green connector. We just need to connect this into any of those open ports. Simple plug and play. Now we can move on to installing the app on our phone um, and then working through the features that are on the phone. At this point, the module will work and run through the power levels with the steering wheel controls. Um, your cruise control buttons will turn the power levels up and down, but that app will give us more access to a bunch of the features that are in the Easy X itself. So we'll move on to that step next. So at this point, we've finished the installation of the Easy X harness and module, and we need to reconnect our battery terminal so we can power the truck up, connect our app, and then we can start walking through those features. So again, we'll move over to that driver's side get that battery post connected. It was that 10 millimeter on this side. Make sure that's good and tight for a strong connection. Then we'll move over to the passenger battery. That was the smaller eight millimeter. Get that one on, tighten it up. And then like we mentioned before, we've included some zip ties in the kit so that you can go back and zip tie this harness up to the firewall away from the manifold, the heat sources, any of the moving parts with the EGR system. So once we get that all tidied up, we'll move in um, and we can start walking through the, the different features on the app. Okay, so we've completed the installation of the EZX harness and module under the hood. We've been out and driving the truck. We've been able to use our cruise control buttons to turn those power levels up and down. You can feel that extra 45 horsepower and 117 foot-pound of torque. Really makes a difference in the drivability, um, but to really unlock all of the features that are in this EZX, we need that smartphone app. So we've got the key turned on with the engine off, and we're gonna go ahead and open the app that we've downloaded from our Google or our Apple store. And when we open that app, we need the first time we connect to the device, we need to be within a foot of that module under the hood. So we're gonna do this step right here under the hood of the truck. Um, once it's connected, you'll be able to do all of your feature control and open the app and do everything from in the cab. The Bluetooth signal is strong enough then, but that first connection we wanna be right here under the hood. So it's detected that this is the first time we were connecting to the module. The app needs to check for module updates before continuing. This could take 15 minutes or more. Once you start the update, you will not be able to drive your truck until the update is complete. If now is not a good time, choose cancel and close the app. We're gonna go ahead and select continue. And our phone is now going to connect to our servers and see that the module is up to date or if it needs to be updated. The app has recognized the serial number on our module. It's also recognized the part number, the 32711, which is specific to the 13 to 18 Cummins. It says that we're up to date. Press back to continue. Got a lot of glare on that phone screen here, but <clears throat> once we get into the cab out of the lights of the studio here, it'll be a little bit better to see. So here we are in the home screen of our app where we can walk through all the added features for the 13 to 18 models. So we're gonna go into the cab of the truck where we got a little better lighting and we'll start walking through all of these features of the device. All right, so we've moved into the cab of the truck. We're gonna walk you through the phone app and all of the features that are available here. Um, first off, we've got our power level menu. You can access these power levels through the app or again, through the steering wheel controls. You can use those cruise control buttons to change the power levels on the fly, but you can also do it here in the app by changing your power levels here. The nice thing here with the app is that you can actually go in and edit your throttle sensitivity. You can see that we've got preset levels. So power level one has the throttle sensitivity of one, power level two, sensitivities at two, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to power level five, which has got it set at sensitivity five. But if you wanna go in and fine tune that throttle sensitivity, adjust that pedal lag to your liking, you can simply press on that button to the right that showed the plus five, and we can go in and we can select any one of these different pedal settings for that specific power level. So if we want a more aggressive pedal, we like power level five, but we want it to be even more aggressive. So we get into that power curve even sooner with less throttle input, we can actually bump that up to our number six ludicrous level. So now power level five now has that number six 
pedal feel. But we can go in, we can also do that, say we like daily driving or towing on power level three, but we want a more aggressive pedal there as well. We can go in and edit that pedal sensitivity on that power level. Um, so you can kind of fine tune each power level to have that pedal feel that you prefer the best. Um, the other thing to note is that when you cycle through your power levels, you can see that the LEDs change on here. It also changes on the factory dash display. It's now displaying level four on our factory gauge cluster. If we change that power level to two, it's updated here. It's also updated on the screen. The screen on our cluster now says level two. Same thing with those cruise control buttons. Like we mentioned, we can press our resume and set buttons and see the power levels change on the display itself. It'll also update in the app. But as to the other features in the app, we can go into our tire size adjustment man and we can adjust that tire size. So if we've installed a lift and larger tires, we can go in and set our modified tire size so that our speedometer will read correctly for those larger tires. The one thing that we do need to mention is that you don't want to input the size of the tire that's printed on the tire. So if you're running a 35, 12, 50, 20, um, it's not likely that that tire is actually 35 inches tall when it's mounted and balanced and on the truck. So get a tape measure out and measure from the ground to the top of that tire. You'll find that the 35 inch tire normally stands about 33 and three quarter inches. 37s are normally about 35 and a half. So inputting the actual measured tire height is gonna give you the most accurate speedometer. Again, you could check that um, to make sure that your speedometer is accurate with the number you're inputting by using a GPS uh, input from your phone. Um, but the measured tire height should give you the, the most accurate reading. So once you change that tire size, go ahead and update the tire size. It's going to update it in the app. I'll update in the module so that your speedometer on the truck is correct. Same thing with the gear ratio. We can go in and change that uh, gear ratio. So this is only going to be used for those guys that have actually physically changed their ring and pinion. Um, so we give you that warning here. Going in and changing the gear ratio in the app is not gonna do anything to the truck but adjust that speedometer readout for the change in gear ratio. So if you haven't had your uh, diff covers off and changed the ring and pinion, then you don't need to use this at all. But if you have gone to a larger tire, uh, 37s, and you didn't like the way the truck felt with the factory 355 gears or whatever it might've been, you've changed to some 410s, you can go in and adjust that in the app. We have this TPMS setting where we can go in and we can enable and disable our TPMS setting. Uh, so we can disable the TPMS system. So if you've installed aftermarket tires that don't have TPMS sensors in them, you can just select disabled um, and then you won't have a check engine light on the dash letting you know that the, the sensors aren't being recognized. So we can disable the system altogether. The other option you have is you can just disable the light. So if you have sensors in the tires, but you run a lower pressure than what the factory ECM is asking for, um, I believe it's 60 PSI in these applications or 65 PSI. So if you run your tire pressure lower than that, you're gonna have a check engine light on the dash. You can actually go in and just disable the light. So you won't have to stare at that. We can't adjust the pressure sensor settings up and down, but we can disable the light. So you can run the prior, the, the sensors at a lower level. Um, we're going to go back. We've got our button recall. This is one of my favorite features of the easy X, especially if you do a lot of towing. Um, the button recall is basically an on off switch. So when the system is activated, the app icon lights up green. And basically what this is going to do is remember your button settings of your exhaust brake and your tow haul mode. So if you're someone that likes to daily drive with your exhaust brake on all the time, or you're towing across country and you've got your exhaust brake, normally when you shut the truck off, it's going to revert to its factory settings. So you turn the truck off. The next time you restart the truck, the exhaust brake is not going to be on. So the button recall will remember that we had the exhaust brake enabled. Um, it's going to remember that you were in tow haul when you shut the truck off. So when you're stopping for fuel every 250 miles, every time you go to leave that fuel station, the exhaust brake is going to be on. The tow haul mode is going to be on. So uh, it's just going to remember the, the previous setting when you shut the truck off. Super handy feature. We've also got a turbo timer what, that a lot of guys really appreciate. Now with the turbo timer, we can set a, a time threshold or we can set it based off EGT or we can even set it off both. So down here at the bottom, you've got EGT time both or just leave the turbo timer off. So you can set this so that the engine will run for say four minutes after you shut it off or it can read one of the factory EGT sensors under the hood and we can let it, the engine idle to whatever temperature, say 450 degrees. So when you shut the truck off, 
take the key out of the ignition, the engine is going to stay running until you reach one of those thresholds if you've got this system enabled. Next up, we've got our max cruise. This allows us to go in and adjust the max cruise control set point in the Cummins applications. It will not allow you to engage cruise control over 85 miles an hour. The app in the EZX will allow you to set that as high as 97 miles per hour. Next up is our fog with high beams. This is again just an on off switch. So this EZX will allow you to keep your fog beams on when you engage your high beams. Um, so that's just a, a nice little handy feature. Um, the fog lights won't turn off like they do factory when you go to high beams. The ECT protect, this is just a tile to let you know um, what the ECT protect is. So this is engine uh, coolant protection. So this is basically just telling you that the device is not going to add any power. If you're in power level five, you're not gonna get any of that additional power until the engine gets up to operating temp. So when that coolant temperature reaches a certain set point, then it'll start adding that power. <clears throat> Um, additionally, it will also reduce power if your coolant temperature gets too hot. So if you get up to say 235 degrees or 240 degrees coolant temperature, the device will actually start turning the power down in a safety mode back to the factory setting. So that's just to give you a heads up that the device is going to add or take power away um, when it needs to based off of engine temperature. We've got our DPF regen here and this is uh, basically allows us to perform a manual regen. So it gives us all of the, the uh, criteria we need to be at to perform that manual regen. Now the truck is obviously automatically regening when it needs to, uh, but there are times when it doesn't go, get to go through a full, uh, full regen or the regen uh, fails and you may need to do a, a manual regen. Normally you would have to take it to the dealer, take it to a repair shop to have them do it. The EZX allows you the ability to do that manual regen yourself and save you some repair costs. We got to have the temperature up to a uh, engine has to be up to 160 degrees. We've got to make sure we've got the fuel level above 15% and then it needs to have been idling for at least one minute. Uh, we're not obviously going to perform that regen now, but the device will give you the ability to do that. Last of, uh, feature is the diagnostics. This will allow us to read and clear trouble code. The nice thing is, is if you read a code and have a code, um, it'll tell you what that code is and then it'll actually tell you what has triggered that code. So it can kind of help you with some of the diagnostics and maybe save you another repair bill because you can do some of that yourself through the app. And then we can also check our emissions readiness. So if you live in a county or a state that requires emissions testing, um, there are quite a few different sensors that have to be set in the truck before you can have that emissions test done. So before you get to the emission center, you can actually check to make sure everything's ready and set so that when you go to do that test, you're good to go uh, and they don't send you away to drive the truck more to get those to set. The app is super easy to, to move through, a lot of functionality. Um, up in the top left corner, we've got the hamburger button that gives you a bunch of the product information. We've got our serial number, the app version. Um, we can actually link over to our Edge website um, if we wanted to look at any of the other products we've got available for your application. So it is a super user-friendly app that gives you access to a lot of features that the competition doesn't offer. So we're, we're not only adding power, we're reducing that pedal lag with the built-in throttle booster, but we're giving you access to a bunch of these other features that the competition's devices can't do. Um, this is a great upgrade for a daily driver. The guy that does a lot of towing is really gonna appreciate what the EZX can add to this truck. Again, we, we do in-house emissions testing so that we have, we've tested the, the tunes, the calibrations that are within this device. We know that they are gonna be emissions compliant. We've already submitted uh, our application to CARB so that we can apply for our EO. It's just in a waiting process for that. Um, but we really look forward to getting this out in the market and you guys getting it under the hood of your trucks. Um, you will really appreciate that uh, mid-range torque when you're towing your trailer. Again, 45 horsepower. It's not a giant gain in horsepower, but it's, it's a modest improvement that you can definitely feel when you're daily driving. The improvement in throttle response, acceleration. Um, you may even see an increase in fuel mods because we're making some adjustments to that fuel rail pressure. Um, some of our beta testers were seeing 10 to 20 percent increases in fuel mileage depending on how you drive uh, in the situation obviously we don't make any specific claims to mileage but uh, you could expect to see some um, again this is this is safe for a stock truck we, you can run this in a 100 percent stock truck factory airbox factory exhaust there needs to be no other upgrades to run the ezx um, and it's tuned and calibrated to be safe for your factory drivetrain, um, safe on your factory emissions equipment. So as long as your driving um, stays consistent, 
you shouldn't really see any change in uh, regen frequency or um, anything like that. So we think you'll really enjoy the way the, the RAM responds to this EZX being installed. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to vi uh, visit Edge Products website. You can check out our social media channels at, at Facebook or YouTube. Um, stop by your local authorized Edge dealer, get some more details, uh, and let us know if you have any questions.